The women of Nimbin's alternative society have shown that when it comes to survival lifestyles, they're as good as any man. Indeed, their achievements are now part of Nimbin folklore and folk song. Now this Nimbin Sheila took me in the moonlight. She sat me down and landed on me knee. She raised her pretty skirt and grabbed her banjo. And sat till sunrise serenading me. Oh, how I love those Nimbin country Sheila. Goddesses in three-part harmony. Far away from the noise and the wheel of dealers. Stone the crows, it's Nimbin girls for me. Now when I die and make me way to heaven. At those pearly gates I know I'll see. The angel choirs are packing up and Nimbin Sheilas are there on God's TV. How I love those Nimbin country Sheilas. Goddesses in three-part harmony. Far away from the noise and the wheel of dealers. Stone the crows, it's Nimbin girls for me. Here we go. How I love those Nimbin country Sheilas. Goddesses in three-part harmony. The Tunterball community has its own preschool kindergarten. The children lead simple lives close to nature have a lot of freedom and are remarkably healthy looking. They accept material poverty because they've known little else. But they have the luxury of much love from adults who have time to spare for them. What colour are they? Violet. Violet. What's another word for violet? Purple. Purple. There are many more preschoolers on the way. The Alternative Society is currently enjoying a baby boom and, as befits an alternative society, hospitals are spurned. Natural birth in the home with a midwife is the accepted way. The saving to taxpayers is immense. Some see the baby boom as a maturing of the alternative society, another step in its evolution. Such developments confound critics in mainstream society. They'd hoped this search for utopia would have collapsed long ago. In Nimbin Town, the criticism is muted. In nearby Lismore, it is strident, centred largely on the belief that the new settlers are dirty, smoke pot, and are dull bludgers. The so-called bludgers see it differently. Jerry Bradley has been drawing the dole for two years, but he regards it as a rural subsidy. In that time, he's converted an abandoned banana packing shed into a temporary house for his family and cleared a hillside of lantana and scrub. On the land, he's planted 300 fruit and nut trees. He hopes that will eventually make him independent of the dole and perhaps provide money for a better house. The land he works belongs to the Tuntable Cooperative. In the eyes of ex-barrister David Spain, the Nimbin experiment has global implications. We are exploring and finding what will become a valid lifestyle for people all over the planet. We must look at the immense difficulties which the mainstream civilizations find themselves in at this time. Governmental complexity, military confrontation, adversary separative processes, employers against employees and legal litigation, environmental destruction, pollution, uh, unhappy, unhealthy people. On all hands, there are problems abounding up there. Yet, what we are exploring here does naturally resolve many of those problems because people are living close to nature in cooperative groups they 
tend to be mentally happy because they're eating fresh food out of their gardens and exercising, they're naturally healthy. If the Aquarian visionaries around Nimbin have failed to set the world on fire with their philosophy, they show no disappointment. Time, they say, is on their side. Mainstream society and its search for salvation from economic chaos will eventually turn to Nimbin for lessons on how to live in a post-industrial era. But if the basis of a new age civilization has been laid at Nimbin, the locals have not let it change their lives to any degree. The Sunday morning rituals are still observed, a walk to town for fresh baked bread, and of course, church. There's little interaction between the new settlers and the established Christian churches. However, many of their philosophies, their spiritual attitudes, and their intense relationship to the environment are religious in the Christian sense. The churches are generally seen as part of an outdated corporate state and thus have little appeal in the alternative culture. Its Sunday ritual is like a harmonious gathering of the tribes. Shannon Market is a place of physical and spiritual revival for the new settlers. It also gives straight society a chance to experience something of the counterculture without straying too far from the safety of known paths. Shannon is one of four such markets held in the region each month. They're important sources of money for the alternative economy and generally attract several thousand people. Fees paid by stallholders go to charities. Life here is not about sitting under a mango tree in a cloud of pot. It's more about the meaning and worth of work, the meaning of life, and the alternatives to unemployment or lifelong mortgages. Above all, there's an almost mystical devotion to protecting the environment and working the land with love. The new settlers might at times seem naive, but the sincerity of the majority is beyond question. For the Meltzer family from Sydney, the alternative lifestyle has yielded them a beautiful house of 15 squares. They built it themselves over three years using recycled materials, including a demolished road bridge. The house cost only $5,000 and they're free of debt. As members of the Tuntable Falls Cooperative, they have as many hectares as they care to work. Like other new settlers, they now have the autonomy the time and the space to explore life in a way quite different from so many of their contemporaries. But is the social experiment at Nimbin a success? Sonia Atkinson, a coordinator of the Tuntable Falls Cooperative. What do you mean by success? If you mean um, lots of material goods and lots of prestige and lots of money and two cars in the garage and bank managers falling over you to lend you money? No. There's not a lot of material prosperity and no prestige involved in being here but if you mean are people happy where before they were not happy if they've come to a place where um, what they're doing is what they want to do where they are achieving things which they weren't achieving before then of course it's very successful um, how, how do you measure success Nowhere falls when the strong keep on. 
Oh 